cells actually carry out life functions. It contains the information, the unit of life. Everything that is living is composed of either one cell, whether it be a bacteria or a protist, or multicellular. Everything from humans to oak trees to fish and bacteria have cells. The cell, the basic unit of life. The cell is the simplest component of living matter that can carry out all of the activities necessary for life in every organism. The simplest life forms are made up of only one cell, and in fact the vast majority of organisms are single-celled, like bacteria, amoebas, and paramecium. More complex life, like plants and animals, are multicellular, and these organisms can have trillions of cells. No one really knows the exact number of cells in the human body. It is estimated that there are anywhere from 10 trillion to 100 trillion cells, and about 200 different types of cells, with different shapes and various functions. While there is no such thing as a typical cell, most cells have chemical and structural features in common. The individual cell is actually a system unto itself, comprised of atoms and molecules, which combine to form proteins and various organelles which structure the cell. In multicellular organisms, like cells group together to form tissue, and tissues in turn combine to form organs, such as the heart. But the heart has many different types of cells to help it function. There are red blood cells which transport oxygen, white blood cells which help fight disease, and cardiac muscle cells that help the heart contract and pump blood throughout the body. Organs function together to make up organ systems, which ultimately make up an organism. And each cell's activity is dependent on the subcellular structures within the cell. So a cell is not just something that we look at under a microscope and see, oh yeah, there's a cell. The cell is an activity, just as if you were to take a human city and speed it up tremendously with the way that all the people are moving around. So there's all this motion going on inside the cell. The key to understanding how the body works, or how plants make food, as well as understanding the new frontiers like biotechnology and genetic engineering, is dependent on understanding cells. Most cells are microscopic. They cannot be seen without the aid of a microscope. But if you look at a slice of an orange, you will see it is actually made up of lots of tiny sacs. These sacs are large plant cells, visible to the naked eye. Because cells are so small, they remained hidden and unknown for centuries. It wasn't until the invention and development of microscopes that this miniature world was finally revealed, allowing scientists to study and begin to understand cellular life. In 1839, two German biologists, Matthias Schleiden, and Theodore Schwann developed an idea called cell theory. While looking at thin slices of animals and plants through a microscope, they saw how everything seemed to be made of tiny chambers. They called these chambers cells. Their theory states that all living organisms are composed of cells and that cells are the building blocks of life. And while these were important revelations and are still accepted today, they still didn't know where cells came from. In 1850, Rudolf Virchow saw something that would change this. In his microscope, he observed cells pinching in two. He realized that cells actually come from pre-existing cells through cell division and added this to the cell theory. Over the years, scientists have continued to develop this theory and modern cell theory now states that all organisms are made up of cells, that new cells are always produced from pre-existing cells. The cell is a structural and functional unit of all living things. The cell contains hereditary information, which is passed on from cell to cell during cell division. And all cells are basically the same in chemical composition and metabolic activities cell biologists still cannot describe all the details of how cells produce the quality we call life. But recent research in genetics, developmental cell biology, immunology, and neurobiology have led to great strides in understanding structures, functions, and evolution of the cell.
There are different types of cells, and certain cells have different functions. Yet there are things all cells have in common, and one is a cell membrane that surrounds and encases the cell. The cell has a membrane around it, which has various protein molecules on that membrane that serve as gates to let certain chemicals in and out of the cell. So the membrane is very important, uh, kind of like the border of a nation is with its, with its gates to you know, let the things, people or goods in, in or out of the nation. That, that's like the membrane of a cell. It determines what substances um, are going to pass right through. It determines what substances need to have a messenger to take them through. It maintains the integrity of the cell. It contains all this material, all this organic material, the unit of life from the outside world. Within the cell membrane, there is a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm, which aids the structure and function of the cell. And while all cells function similarly, there are some important structural differences. Cell biologists group cells into two categories, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Bacteria and archaea are prokaryotic cells. These represent the simplest, most primitive life on Earth, as prokaryotic cells are more simple than eukaryotic cells. And that means that they don't really have a nucleus and they don't have a membrane that encloses the organelle, so everything is kind of, you know, dispersed in the fluid of the cell, in the cytoplasm. All other organisms like protists, fungi, plants and animals are made up of eukaryotic cells, which are more modern and complex. And one can even talk about the evolution of cells, the, uh, the way cells have gotten more complex over time. Uh, basically, our human cells are more complex than bacteria cells. Eukaryotic cell has a true nucleus where the DNA is encased instead of floating around in cytoplasm and the rest of the organelles are encased by a membrane as well. Organelles are special membrane-bound structures inside the cell which carry out specialized functions. Just as we have organs within our body, the cell has organs within it. Because the cell is very small, these organs are called by cell biologists organelles. The animal cell has a very important organelle called the nucleus, which is where the DNA is housed. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is found in all cells. It is composed of molecules which carry genetic information. It is in a sense the instruction manual or blueprint for cells that specifies how proteins are assembled to regulate the cell. What is it that DNA does? Uh, is it the boss in the cell? Uh, you know, is, it, is it the kind of government in a cell? Not really. I look upon it more like the U.S. Constitution in that it's, it has to be actively gone to by the society itself and used to structure the government. In, that's, that's for our society. For a cell, the DNA as a code is gone to by the, all the other molecules of the cell that are spinning around in their various interactions and metabolisms that are going to the DNA for the pattern of the code that makes the amino acids, that makes the proteins. Chemical reactions and enzymes produce proteins which carry out the cell's activities and ribosomes are where the proteins are made. There are the ribosomes, small little bodies, and very, very many of them inside animal cells. And in fact, ribosomes are in all cells. And that is where the amino acids, small little building block molecules that make proteins, are brought together into chains. And these chains fold up into the proteins that are used, that all cells need. And that occurs on, on the ribosomes of the cell. There's the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, which is a network of membranes that encircles the nucleus and extends into the cytoplasm. The ER is responsible for synthesizing and assembling proteins and is where the ribosomes are located. There's the Golgi complex, 
a group of flattened sacs that are responsible for processing, sorting, and modifying the proteins, and the lysosomes, which are small sacs of digestive enzymes that break down ingested materials, secretions, and wastes. They are, in a sense, the stomach of the cell. Then there are the organelles, called mitochondria. They are smaller than the nucleus, and there tend to be many of them throughout the cell. And these mitochondria are the uh, power plants of the cell. They convert the food that comes into the cell and combine it with oxygen to create energy molecules that power reactions in the rest of the cell. Though plant cells are eukaryotic and have many of the same organelles as animal cells, such as a nucleus and endoplasmic reticulum, the plant cells have certain characteristics which are significantly different. When we look at the plant cells, we see um, major differences with animal cells. Um, plants, of course, don't have skeletons. Each cell has its own skeleton, and that's the cell wall that go outside of the cell membrane. Um, these cell walls are economically quite important. For instance, uh, wood is all cell wall. Uh, cotton fiber is a very pure kind of cell wall made up almost exclusively of cellulose. But one of the most important differences distinguishing plants from animals can be found inside the cell. Plant cells have chloroplasts, organelles that contain a green pigment called chlorophyll, which traps light energy from the sun and combined with water and CO2 makes food for the plant through a process called photosynthesis. And then there's one other structure that's extremely important that is uh, largely unique to plant cells, and that's the vacuole. The vacuole is where water is stored. This ability to store water, to regulate water, um, is one of the things that makes uh, plant cells be able to respond so rapidly to the environment. Very quick motions are centered around changing uh, water distribution in plants. As cell theory states, all cells come from previously existing cells. This happens through cell division. Cell division, called mitosis, is an amazing and quite elegant process that enables organisms to grow and reproduce. And though there are some differences, this process is remarkably similar in all organisms. Through a sequence of steps, replicated genetic material of a parent cell is equally distributed to two daughter cells. It starts as all the chromosomes or genetic material are organized into entangled structures called chromatin. In the first phase, called prophase, the chromatin condenses into distinct chromosomes and spindles that provide the mechanics for the division form at opposite poles of the cell. In the second phase, called metaphase, the chromosomes are aligned, equally distant from the two spindled poles. Next, in the anaphase, the paired chromosomes move to opposite ends of the cell. In the last phase, telophase, the chromosomes are cordoned off in distinct new nucleuses. This happens as cytokinesis divides the cytoplasm making two distinct cells. Understanding the basics of cell structure and function is the foundation for understanding the future of science. Cell biologists, geneticists, and other scientists are investigating the properties of cells to find new ways to manipulate and replicate cells for use in agriculture, such as producing healthier and hardier plants. And in medicine, stem cell research is making strides in showing scientists how to make cells differentiate to do specific jobs, like increase insulin in diabetics, or possibly find cures for diseases such as Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis. Further investigation into how cells evolved and are continuing to evolve may uncover many of the yet unsolved mysteries of our world. <laughs>